What's going on my friends? I'm Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U. Today's service call is a very, very simple one. Uh, we're gonna go out and change out some old existing fluorescent lights for some new LED lights. I love jobs like this. This is super simple. This is probably gonna take me about 20 minutes total from the time I get up there, pull the old ones down, put the new ones up. But I figure it gives us some talking points to talk about my method and what I do and how I do it. The first thing that I'm gonna do is go up and take the existing fixtures out. This is rather simple. Um, a lot of times you, when you take the cover off or the lens off one of these fixtures, you'll break them. So just kind of be careful not to break them. Most of the time you're gonna find that they're screwed in to the sheetrock and they're being held on the sheetrock with toggle bolts rather than screwed into wood. Um, just the chances of you actually hitting wood are a lot more slim than they are of you just having an open space. So you're gonna be dealing with toggle bolts most of the time. When I unscrew toggle bolts, there's kind of a methodology with toggle bolts so they don't just sit and spin up there. Um, you kind of have to pull down on the fixture a little bit and keep pressure uh, with your drill, you're pushing up with your drill and pulling down with the fixture. If you just push up, the thing's just gonna sit and spin and you're not gonna get anywhere with it. Another thing that I'm really big on is trying to make sure that you're taking as few trips up and down ladders as possible. So like, I like to kind of do one thing. I talk about this in a lot of my videos. I like to do one kind of thing over and over and over and then go to the next kind of thing. So like, I'll go and remove all of the fixtures and then I'll go put all of the fixtures up. So in this situation, really, it's not gonna matter. You're still gonna be going up and down ladders all the time. But when you see me taking lamps out of the fixtures or putting lamps up into the fixtures, usually I'm gonna carry the belly pan and the lamps and the diffuser when I'm coming down the ladder or when I'm going up instead of taking a trip up every single time and going back down every single time. Fun fact, did you know that LED lights do not use ballasts, they use drivers instead? Difference between a ballast and a driver, essentially they're the same thing, but a ballast just takes one voltage, changes it into a different voltage, whereas a driver does that, but it also changes AC power to DC power. Now, if you notice in these existing fixtures, there's actually two ballasts. Um, and it, you know, when I first started doing that, I was like, why are there two ballasts up in one fixture? And back then, you know, these are old magnetic ballasts. They probably just had a lot of two lamp ballasts laying around in the manufacturing process. It was probably cheaper than manufacturing a four lamp ballast or trying to find a four lamp ballast. So you'll see a lot of older fixtures done this way, especially like T12 fixtures, um, but they will take two two lamp ballasts and then they'll wire everything on the tombstones um, um, in a configuration so that they'll work together as a total four lamp solution with those two ballasts. And then what are tombstones? So uh, tombstones are the things at the ends. You'll probably hear them called tombstones a lot, um, but there's different styles of tombstones. Some of them are twisting and locking. Some of them just snap into place. Some of them are shunted. Some of them are unshunted. We'll worry about that in a different video. But the tombstones are the ends where the, uh, the pins of the lamps snap in place. Now you'll notice that I'm going and grabbing a box that's already been opened. One thing I should probably mention, before you go through all of the effort of taking all of these fixtures down, it's a really good idea to open up the boxes and see what you're working with first. So I did that, I just didn't have any footage of it to show you. But if I have brand new lights, I will always open these lights, make sure everything's gonna work with what's there before I go up and start taking everything down. Because the off chance that I'm wrong and I take everything down and I come back down and open up the boxes and it's like, oh crap, these aren't gonna work. Now they don't have any lights. So you might have to like go put everything back together. Um, so it's just a good idea. You know, anytime you have new boxes of lights and things like that, before you start taking old stuff down, always open up the new stuff and just make sure it's gonna work. Now, the first thing to do when you open up the new fixture is you need to measure out the holes inside of the fixture. Every fixture is gonna have these little holes at the end and that's where it's meant to secure the light up into whatever you're mounting it to. Um, so 
I always try to measure what that is and then I go up in the ceiling and the first fixture actually worked out just fine. I was able to reuse those holes. I didn't have to do anything different. Um, the second fixture, however, the holes didn't line up. So you'll see me having to uh, make new holes to make that work. But that's why you always measure everything out first and go and check it. Big shout out to Ariat. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this video. If you guys are not uh, wearers of Ariat boots, you should be. I know everybody's got like their brand and there's tons of different brands out there. I'm just a huge fan of Ariat's. I've been wearing them for years. Um, I find that they have all the right ratings for electricians. Um, they even have like crazy stuff like non-slip, you know, like uh, static dissipation, like all kinds of stuff. I'm more of a fan of the composite toe or the carbon toe than I am necessarily a steel toe. I just think having less metal around me where I'm stepping on the ground and dealing with live electrical stuff, it's just, it's just my preference. Um, but uh, go check out Ariat. There's a link in the description below. Uh, get yourself some Ariat boots. Now what you see me doing is I'm actually stealing the, uh, the plastic bushings out of the other fixtures. Um, there's a little half inch plastic bushings that they put in and that just bushes the metal opening where the wires come in so the wires don't get all nicked up and scratched. Let's learn some code really quick. So uh, we're talking about fluorescent fixtures and disconnecting means. You know, we have these quick disconnects on the fixtures. The question is fluorescent fixtures versus LED fixtures. Do we have to have a quick disconnect or what we call it, you know, disconnecting means inside of the fixture? So let's look. Um, I know from doing commercial work, anytime you have a fluorescent fixture, you have to put a quick disconnect, even if it's like an existing installation um, and there's not quick disconnects up there to disconnect the ballast quickly from the uh, incoming conductors. Um, but do we have to do it with LEDs and do we have to do it in homes? That's the question. So let's go to, uh, what are we at? 410 is luminaires. So uh, a luminaire is a light fixture. That's just what code calls light fixtures, luminaires. 410.130G, uh, one, disconnecting means general. It says in indoor locations other than dwellings and associated structures. So already we're in a house, this doesn't apply to us. In indoor locations other than dwellings and associated accessory structures, fluorescent, fluorescent luminaires that uh, utilize double ended lamps and contain ballasts that can be serviced in place shall have a disconnecting means either internal or external to each luminaire. For existing installation luminaires without disconnecting means at the time the ballast is replaced, a disconnecting means shall be installed. The line side terminals of the disconnecting means shall be guarded. So that's what I'm saying. If you're in a commercial environment and you're dealing with fluorescence, every fluorescent fixture that you work on, you have to, if you know, if you're changing out the ballast, when you put a new ballast in, you need to put a new quick disconnect in. Um, but that is other than dwellings. That's not in houses. So if you keep looking, there's some exceptions to the rules, but that's still exceptions within the section that has nothing to do with houses. So none of the exceptions apply to us. Uh, it says multi-wire branch circuits. That doesn't apply to us. That's when you have like two different home runs that share one neutral. You know, you get like a 12-3 home run. Uh, location is talking about where the disconnect has to be installed. Direct current equipment, luminaires installed on DC circuits. This is not installed on a DC circuit, although it does have a driver inside of it that is converting it to DC. Uh, it's not on a DC circuit. Anything more than 300 volts. And that's it for the whole section. So the answer is, while this fixture does come with a quick disconnect, uh, there's no need to have to put one, at least for this cycle of code, I think it would be pretty silly not to. It just makes working on these fixtures so much easier when you have a quick disconnect um, in every one of these fixtures. But at least for code, you don't have to. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put brand new toggle bolts in these new fixtures. I always prep the toggle bolts first. I stick, you know, uh, take them apart, stick the bolt in, 
put the toggle end just barely on the top. Um, I put it in, uh, like screw it in enough so that when I stick it through the sheetrock, it's not gonna fall off, but I don't wanna screw it all the way down because it kind of screws you and doesn't give you leverage. And then once I've got all of those in, I stick the fixture up there and I pop each one of the heads of the toggle bolt in and just let the fixture hang. That way it's up there. Now, for some reason, if I have to take it back down, you're gonna just burn one of those toggle bolt ends because it's already up in the sheetrock. There's no way that you're gonna get it back out. So if you unscrew it, you just lost the end of it. So I recommend like, Make sure you're ready for it. But the cool thing is when it's hanging down from the ceiling, it gives you access above it. So if you have to mess with the wires, um, it's not all the way secured up yet. Then what I do is take my drill and I start on one end, I pull down on the fixture and push up on the drill so that it keeps tension on the head of that toggle bolt above the sheetrock. If you just try to push up on it, the thing's just gonna sit and spin on you. So you have to kind of keep an equal amount of tension until it gets up there. Then you go to the other side, do the same thing, tighten it um, while pulling down and pushing up at the same time. Once I get it you know, tight, um, I'll, I'll take my tape measure and I'll go from the closest wall to one side of the fixture and then that same wall to the other side of the fixture and it lets me know if it's square in the room. You don't really have a, a reference point sitting there on a ladder in the middle of the room to see if it's straight and from that ladder angle you'll, you'll think that it's straight and you'll look at it and then you get down and go from a different angle and you're like holy crap that thing is way off so it just helps to go off of like the nearest wall measure both sides of the fixture and that'll tell you if it's straight in the room these new fixtures that i got they have remote dimming wires so I'm not gonna use those. Those are something that you would use in probably a commercial environment if you have a lighting control somewhere and you're sending a signal to try to dim these. So I just keep those out of the way. I hook the ground up a lot. This is really important. A lot of people just like don't care about the ground wire. You need to ground all of these fixtures. They're metal fixtures. Anything that's metal around an electrical system, you have to hook up the equipment grounding conductor. So I bend a hook, uh, hook up the green screw to the ground wire. Then I hook up the white and the black incoming neutral to the new quick disconnect in the fixture. The last thing that I do is I always try to figure out a way to get all of the extra slack of all these conductors. Um, you got all you know different ballast leads and everything and it can kind of be messy when you try to put the belly pan back in the fixture. So I will usually grab from both ends and pull the slack inward and then I'll twist that bundle together and try to tuck it around the other wires. And I try not to do it in a like pain in the ass way so like anybody that has to come and fix it or if I have to come back out and do something with this it's not like a tangled crazy mess usually if you just kind of twist in one direction it gets everything going the same way and it stays up there really neat then I install the belly pan and being that it's LED we don't have any bulbs to put in that's pretty rad now all we have to do is put the reflector on um, the reflector a lot of times people break these so it's really it's kind of like you have to have some finesse when you're putting reflectors in there's like this sweet spot where you can bend one side you hook one side on and then you kind of bend back a little bit and uh, get the other edge over but the reflector is just supposed to kind of hang there they're really a pain in the butt but just know if you break one of them most often you're gonna have to go buy a whole new fixture there are some like Home Depot for some of their fixtures they do have replacement uh, lenses for them or you can go to a manufacturer and order one on Amazon and hope that it doesn't come in broken um, but it's just a pain so really 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 take your time putting lenses back on fixtures like this um, because they break all the damn time and it'll just be like one corner one little piece that breaks off and it's like that whole everything that I just did is ruined because now this little piece <laughs> is busted off the corner so just be careful so now that we have the first fixture up, all we gotta do is just repeat the same process for the second fixture. Um, this fixture, the holes did not line up with the fixture. The two existing fixtures were different. So um, I had to put new holes up there and just what I do is I measure out the fixture, um, mark my holes up above, and then I take my keyhole saw. You could use like a paddle bit or, or a number of things to try, try to get a hole up there. Um, I just had my sheetrock knife or my keyhole saw with me. So I just stabbed that up there and kind of like wiggle it around, twist it around a little bit, makes a perfect size hole for the larger toggle bolts that I use. And then snap the toggle bolts in place, snap the fixture in place, did the same thing, wired it up. This one, the leads were really, really short or the wires in the outlet box were really, really short. So I just extended the ballast wires, um, made them a little bit longer and then secured everything back up, put my belly pan in, put my lens cover on. And that was it. So it's time to go test. I turn the light switch on, make sure everything's good to go. Go at turn power back on um, because here's a little bit of safety.
All right, so there's some theory, right? Like if I have a light switch in a room, I can very easily just shut that light switch off and go safely work on the light fixtures in the room. If nobody else is around, that's fine. I think it's a good habit to get into to go shut the breaker off anyways, to keep you in the habit of constantly shutting power off. If you have the availability to turn power off when you're working on something, shut the power off. Yeah, it might suck that you gotta like get off your ladder, go outside, flip a breaker, come back inside. Oh darn. But people get shocked and it's just not worth the risk. I'm not talking about big industrial environments where you're wearing flash suits and working live is something that you have to do. Or there are certain emergency instances where working live, like we make PPE just for work, doing live work. I'm not uh, against doing work live, but I am against taking unnecessary risks with your life. And I think that it is a good idea to go shut a breaker off, especially when there's other people around. I can't tell you how many times I've had a customer walk up and I'm working on a light and they walk around for some reason, they're trying to like turn on other lights and they're not thinking about it. And they're just like hitting every light switch and then boom, they shock me. So it doesn't happen anymore. Now, if I see a customer and I'm working on something and they're going for a light switch, I'm immediately like, ah, ah, stop. Don't do that. <laughs> But it happens, so it's better just to turn the circuit off uh, anytime that you're working on anything, just to make sure you're not gonna get shocked. Now, granted, the same thing could happen. Somebody could walk outside of your electrical panel and be like, hmm, wonder why that breaker's off. Bah! Turn it on and shock you. I know people that have gotten killed because that exact thing has happened. Um, so just be careful, you know, we're not gonna get into whole like lockout tag out procedures here for working on home wiring systems. But I figured, you know, it, it's at least worth it to mention. Be safe, minimize your risk, don't do hot work if you don't have to, but when you have to, make sure you got the right PPE gear and work hot, cause we all have to do it. All right, folks, pretty easy, uh, very easy little service call. Um, I try to do little stuff like that every day. So I'm just like making, you know, a decent money like that. That was a good job because I was able to charge a lot of margin on the light fixtures. Um, it took me very little time. So I charged my hourly rate for the time that it took me to travel, to go get all of the materials and to do all the work. So that was a very, very high margin job. I love little jobs like that. So let me know in the comments if you guys think you would have done anything differently. If you like those jobs, if you hate those jobs, if there's other code articles that you think we should have talked about, any suggestions that you guys got, we're all ears. I love you crazy people, and I will see you in the next video. Best music and video.